kind of hot and spicy with a steamy look it was passed on down by my mother's sweet she told me honey this will be a real good treat to turn a man's heart into a buttercream well you cook a dish that makes him want jump and scream so come into my kitchen come into my kitchen come down to my kitchen Come into my kitchen. Come into my kitchen. Come on down to my kitchen. Won't you come into my kitchen and I will feed you fine. Hi, welcome back. This is Chris Toy. I'm Jeff Mao, and welcome to Down East Far East Kitchen. And today we are going to do. We're playing with scallions today. Yes, we are. So green onions or scallions. Some people call them spring onions, I guess, although I think of those as something different. But anyway, green onions, scallions. Uh, Chris is going to be making... I'm going to be making a Chinese uh, layered omelet. Layered omelet. And I'll be making traditional uh, scallion pancakes. Uh, and we'll be making kind of the, the doughy layered type. There's actually a lot of different variations on this, which I'm sure is both regional as well as just what your family made. These are not the ones that my dad made when I was a kid, uh, but they're the ones that I've kind of learned to make since then. And uh, we'll be doing scallion pancakes and mm -hmm. a layered scallion omelet. Right. And um, uh, we're going to try cooking the pancakes two ways. Right. right. We've got so. two different ways to look at how we cook the pancakes. And uh, what else are we doing today? I think, think that's, that's it. it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start making some dough for the scallion pancakes, and <clears throat> I've already got measured into here flour, salt, sugar, um, and this is a dough that uses both hot water and cool water, or, you know, kind of tap water. Uh, traditionally speaking, what often happens is people will take the hot water, this is the hot water, and kind of pour it into one side of the, of the flour and kind of mix it in, and in general, what happens when you take kind of hot water and mix it with the flour it's going to denature a little bit of the proteins, and so you get a little less gluten development. And then we take the cool water and pour it in on the other side, and that won't denature the, the uh, proteins, and you'll get a little more gluten. And, and the end result is we kind of get a medium gluten development in this pancake. So we want some because we want it to hold together and stretch, but we don't want this thing to be uh, overly chewy. Uh, and all we're going to do with these chops is just Stir this around until the water's kind of soaked up, and then I'm going to use my hands just to get this thing into a ball. So this is kind of what is often referred to as a kind of shaggy dough. You can look at this, it's kind of shaggy looking. And, uh, and then once I get it formed to go into a, a ball with my hands, I'm just going to cover it and let it rest for at least a half an hour. And in that half an hour, the flour, like we've seen in a lot of the other doughs we've done, will just continue to hydrate, and the water will distribute more evenly. The dough will get softer and smoother. And then we'll be ready to do the actual rolling of the, of the scallion pancakes that, um, and we'll, we'll look at that process a little bit later. So let me just get this stuff into a ball. So again, you can just squish it together with your hands. This dough is dry enough that it, it really won't stick to you. If anything, the challenge is getting all the dry bits into you, so I just keep squishing them in there. And this dough really probably could use a little bit of kneading, so I might knead this for just a couple minutes uh, until I get this thing pulled together. So I'll just go ahead and knead this, and then cover it up, and let it rest. And then we'll play with it a little bit more later after it's had a chance to rest. So in the meantime, I'm just going to knead this up, and get ready to go. Hi, I'm Chris Toy. And I'm Jeff Mao. And we are Down East Far East Kitchen. And we also have some cookbooks. So if you're interested, you can find my cookbook, The Essential Chinese Hot Pot Cookbook, at my website, needandnosh.com slash hotpot. And you can find my cookbook, Easy Chinese Favorites, and you can find that at Amazon. So let's get started on our omelets. And these are Chinese layered omelets. It's kind of fun to do. 
Um, this is going to be a little bit different than you might do at home. I'm going to kind of speed through this, not by going fast, but by having multiple uh, pans for, for making the omelets. So let's start off. I'm, I'm going to actually start off with the, with the gravy, which is kind of a standard, you, you might recognize it as an egg foo young gravy, which is just a... Um, in this case, it will be a light brown sauce. So, pretty simple. We've got some simmering water here. And to that, we're going to add a little bit of bouillon. If you have a favorite broth, you can certainly use your, use your favorite broth. And I'm using something that I like to use. It's uh, better than bouillon which is um, a great tasting broth, plus it has a minimum amount of chemicals. So it's asking for a teaspoon for every cup. So we've got a little less than two cups in here. So that'll be good. And what we'll do is just thicken this a little bit. And to do that, I'm just going to use some cornstarch. When you make a slurry, make sure you, you don't add the um, you don't add the cornstarch directly to the to the hot liquid. Otherwise, you will end up with lumps. So I'm going to take about a tablespoon of cornstarch. We can adjust this as we. Uh, as we mix this in. But we're going to want to uh, thicken this so that it, it coats my uh, chopsticks and just kind of drips off in a slow stream. If you're using a spoon, it would cover the spoon. If you're using a spoon to serve, I'm going to use chopstick here. So, let me turn this up a little bit so we're getting this simmering. All right. Whatever. Oh, long burn. There we go. Let's turn this down so we don't burn things up. There we go. All right. All right. So, I'm going to add this a little at a time because we don't want to overdo it. So, let's put in like a teaspoon. Give that a stir, and since this is uh, hot water, we'll start thickening up pretty quickly. There we go. So I'm just kind of going a teaspoon at a time. thickening up and it clarifies a little bit as well so it'll make like a glaze. Turn that down. And So when we get this um, thickened up, what we'll do is we'll flavor it just a little bit with some soy sauce. See, it's thickening up, and we'll just add. So this is uh, mostly for for some color. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of soy sauce.
is. Okay, so I'm going to put this on low simmer. While we make our omelet. So let's head over here. So for the egg, it's pretty simple. I think you're about a half an egg per layer. You're kind of measuring. And I'm gonna try making a four layered omelet. Maybe five if I'm, if I'm feeling uh, courageous. I just want to mix those eggs up. And we're going to flavor this just a little bit with some cooking wine. Shaoxing cooking wine. Don't put in too much. I don't want to thin the eggs out too much. So maybe a teaspoon. And just a touch of sesame oil for some flavor here as well. So we're going to flavor the, the omelets with uh, what we would call the Chinese flavor base which are three aromatics. One is our ginger, fresh ginger, a little bit of garlic and scallions. So these three, uh, garlic, ginger, and scallions, make up the Chinese flavor base. If you've got these three flavors, you can be pretty much assured that it's uh, Chinese in origin and probably by extension Asian. So let's grab our garlic, take some ginger here, fresh ginger. What I like to do is just cut that into a like a quarter inch cone, uh, coin. And here's our scallions. Just probably, you know, I, I would say coarse chop this. I think I'm going like eighth inch. And I like to cut it at an angle. Uh, what that does is it exposes more of the interior of the scallion. Let the flavor out. There we go. Use the whole scallion. Mix that in with our ginger and garlic. I'm going to turn this off. Good. All right. So don't need to peel your uh, your ginger. Just take the side of your cleaver and nail that. And our garlic and just mince that up. So the smashing just releases the flavor a lot and chopping it up. So now, this is our topping for our scallion omelet. Just 
So I preheated my uh, three three pans. My and I'm using cast iron here. Find that cast iron is good for uh, for this purpose. Uh, we're gonna do a, we're gonna oil these a little bit. And you can use any high temperature oil. Um, I'm using avocado oil, which is one of my favorite for frying and stir frying. Can handle pretty high temperatures without burning. I think I may be a half a teaspoon for each of those. Just spread that oil. I like that, that that's smoking a little bit, but not too much. All right. So here we go. Make sure this is mixed up. And when we uh, cook these omelets, we're not going to flip them. What we really want to have happen is that the top of each will stay creamy. There we go. There we go. And we'll just sprinkle our scallion ginger mixture. Right on these. Just like that. So we'll make our layers here. So let's see. Let's see which ones are more done. I think this one here is ready to go. Since I'm going to go with a couple layers, a couple more layers, let's pour that on. There we go. Grab this one. This one behaves better. So another layer. Last layer in the third. Sizzling. Ooh, here we go with six layers. that one on. Let's put this one on. So you can see the top is not quite cooked, but when I layer them up like that, the bottom is going to be hot. Shut that one off. 
This one here is not quite done. This one here is looking pretty good. Don't forget the gravy. So here it's thickened up. I'll just kind of drizzle that on. There. All right. So there you have it. A multi layered. Omelet. Pretty tasty. I'll have to test it. Yum. Okay, so the dough is resting. The next step of this that we can do while that dough rests is to make a roux. We're just going to use equal parts flour and oil, so you really only need about a quarter cup of each. So I've already got the flour in here, I'm just going to add the oil and then put this over a flame and start stirring it around. And you really just want to cook this roux long enough to the point where the roux starts to kind of thicken up a little bit and um, then you know that the, the flour is kind of cooked. And we're going to use this in the pancake to kind of paint between the layers and that's what's going to help make the scallion pancakes get crispy and get those kind of thin layers in the pancake that many of you may associate with a scallion pancake. Uh, so I'm just going to let this cook. I've got it over a relatively low heat. I don't want to go too high because I don't want this thing to burn on me and just kind of keep stirring it. And you'll find that when it's, it's kind of ready as you kind of pull a spoon or some chopsticks through it, it's not that you can see the the metal pan beneath for a long time, but you'll notice that you can kind of, it, it takes a little bit of, before that oil kind of fills in the gap as you, as you kind of stroke through it. But right now it's just very liquidy and it's not, not at all thickened up yet. So we're gonna just let this go for a little while. You don't have to necessarily stir it constantly, but do pay attention to it. If you walk away from it and forget about it, it'll probably burn on you and that won't be good. So you can see it's, uh, so it's a you know thick-ish just because it's oil and, and flour, but anyway, we'll just kind of let that cook for a little bit, and I'll stir it every once in a while to make sure it doesn't burn on me. Once we get that roux set up, then you can see I've already got some scallions chopped up, and then we'll we'll start to deal with rolling out the dough and into the into the shape, and then we'll we'll actually pan fry them on the stove and and try them out. Okay, so as this gotten hotter, you can see it's actually starting to bubble and froth. <clears throat> which is normal. It's going to do that when it gets this hot. But this is when you really just want to make sure you don't walk away from it and let it burn. Of course, while it's frothy, it makes it a little bit harder to kind of tell if you can. It gets thinner because it's just so hot. But once we kind of let this thing cool a little bit, once it's frothy like this, typically I've found it's when it's cooler, then it's, it is thick enough 
and I think it's cooked through. Obviously, at this stage, the flour should be cooked. We won't get that kind of raw flour taste in there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat on this and just let it sit there while I work on the dough. It'll cool off a little bit, and that'll be fine. All right, so let's go check out the dough. All right, so the dough's been resting under a bowl here. It's been a little over a half an hour since we put this here. Uh, and what we can see here on the dough, if I push into it, I can feel it. It's much smoother now, so that's good. And it's kind of as we expected it to be. Set this aside. So I can give this a couple quick kneads just to give it a little final push. But you can see it's now very smooth uh, and supple. So that's nice. So I'm going to just go ahead and divide this into, this recipe makes about five pancakes. Uh, although the size of our pan's a little smaller today, so I think maybe I'll make six of them out of this so that uh, I don't make them too big for the pan. So do that. I'll take these extra pieces and keep them covered so they don't dry out. Don't worry about this. All right, so first step in this is really just rolling it out. You might need a little bit of bench flour, but not a lot. And you want to roll this out as thin as you can get it, because the thinner you get it, the more layers you're going to, be able to fill in there. Kind of see right now, even as I'm not touching it, it's pulling back. <clears throat> that's <coughs> that's the gluten. So <clears throat> there's a little bit of you know gluten elasticity that's it's pulling it back. So if it gets really annoying and you're finding that every time you roll, it's kind of like two steps forward, three steps back, and it's really just not getting any bigger, then just take the dough, cover with a towel, let it sit for five, ten minutes, and then go back at it again. Let the gluten kind of relax. Um, this isn't springing so terribly that I'm too worried, but it is, you can see it's kind of fighting me a little bit. So if you do get to the point where it's really fighting you and you get too annoyed with it, that's what you would do with it. But this is okay, and this is pretty thin now. We're at about an eighth of an inch. Okay, and so we want to get this into a rough oval rectangle-ish. And over here we've got lots of sky. Let me just grab a hand. Oh, actually, I want this. All right, so we've got this roux that we made. So I stir this around. I can see it is definitely thicker now. Um, I don't know if you can see that well, but I'm going to pour it all out. And we're just going to use this and kind of paint this on. Layer. And that's what's going to help as we roll this up to keep the layers separated. And then we'll take a generous amount. This is really up to you how many scallions you want on your scallion pancake. I like a lot, so you can even take a little bit more. Spread that out. And then <clears throat> I will also, I'm going to add a teeny bit of five spice powder, not a lot. And then from here, what you want to do is just roll this up like a jelly roll. You can start on one end, go the other, doesn't really matter what direction, but roll this up. Try not to capture too much air in there. You're going to squish it anyway, but get this all rolled up. So in some sense, you can imagine that's creating some layers. But then once we have this, pat it down, flattened out, and then roll it up like a snail this way. You can see we've got our snail shell this way. Typically, if I'm making all these pancakes, I would get all of them to this state. So I'd set this one aside, cover it, let it do the next, and work my way through the whole thing. Uh, but from here, you can also take this end and kind of just tuck it underneath, and then just lean on it, squish it down. And this is where we might have to give this a couple minutes of rest just because the gluten's going to fight me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let this one rest, cover it up with a ball so it doesn't dry out, and then we'll 
<coughs> roll it out thinner, and then we're going to pan fry it. So we'll just let that sit there for a couple minutes and come back to it. All right, so we've let this one rest a little bit, and actually while we were doing that, I went ahead and rolled out the others, so I've got them hiding under this bowl here, ready to go. But uh, this one, we're just gonna go ahead and roll this out. Now, when you're doing this, you'll find that it's not uncommon that some of the scallions and things will start to burst out. That's fine, don't worry about it. It's gonna happen. Uh, go ahead and just keep rolling this thing and get it pretty thin. It gets a little squishy and gooey, but that's pretty normal for this. You can see there's a layer right there. Having some of these kind of funny edges and things ultimately just cook up on the cast iron as crunchy bits. So that's about as rolled out as I'm going to get. You can see it's kind of torn here, but that's okay. I'm going to take this over to the stove. I've got a cast iron pan that's already heating. I'm going to add a little bit of oil. We're just going to pan fry this for a while, and what you want to do at this stage, like most things when you stick them on a hot pan, is don't touch it. Right? So if you immediately start playing with this thing, it's just going to tear and rip and get more gooey and stuck to your pan. So just let it go for a little while. It'll start to brown up, and eventually it will release, and we'll flip it over. Uh, and we're going to want to get a little bit of charred bits here and there on this, um, and let it go for a little bit. So I've got both a, a pair of tongs and a, a spatula. Uh, eventually what we're going to want to do is take these and, and literally kind of squish the uh, pancake after it's browned and actually start to kind of break it up, but that's going to help some of those layers separate and that's what helps make it kind of a little crunchy uh, pancake. The tricky part about cooking these, I found, is getting the heat. It's oftentimes the first one's never quite perfect, and then the second and the third are better. It's getting the heat just right. What you're trying to balance between is if it's too hot, the outer edges are going to start to burn and, and get charred, which is what you want, but they do it so fast that the inside doesn't cook through. So you kind of have to find that, that balance. Cast iron works well for that because once it gets to the right temp and you kind of get the setting on your stove right, it kind of stays at that heat level and it, it, it settles in. We'll see how this one's going and you know we may have to do a couple flips just to kind of keep things from getting too charred in any one place but a little bit of char is a good thing anyway so, let's see, so i'm going to go ahead and what i was saying here is literally just kind of tack this thing Yeah, and you can see that kind of starts to separate some of the layers, but then as it cooks, it helps to dry out some of those layers and get slightly crispier bits. So if you like the crunch, that's how you get it. Just let that go for another minute or two. Hopefully let the, the insides cook through, and then we'll cut it up, add it just a touch of salt. Some people will like to eat these with other sauces. That's kind of up to you. Sometimes it's just some, a little bit of oyster sauce or maybe a little bit of hoisin. Sometimes I'll just start adding uh, hot chili oil because I just make everything hot and spicy, but it's really up to you. Uh, you can also just eat them straight, though. A lot of people just like to eat these straight. You can find these, I know, in Asia. I found these in Asian markets at the state right before I put it on the pan here, already rolled out, frozen. They look okay, but as you can see, this process really wasn't that hard, so I just prefer to make them myself. probably find almost everything in an Asian market now frozen for better or for worse. Right? Some things just easier to make on your own. Alright, well, let's give this one a try and see how it is.
Let's look at some other triangles. That's way too much salt. A little bit of salt. Good. So you get the crisp outside, the inside is still a bit chewy, which is nice to get the contrast in uh, kind of how it bites. And I think that's what uh, sets out, at least what I like on a, on a scallion pancake. Chris, you want to try a piece? Absolutely. Great. It's like going out for dim sum. Yum. So scallion pancakes, not nearly as hard as they look. A mm. little bit of labor, but not really much. And again, if you've got kids around, they'll enjoy sprinkling the scallions, rolling them up, making a snail, the whole thing. It, uh, it's a pretty easy process to do. So okay. that's scallion pancakes. And then our uh, scallion omelets. Awesome. That's awesome. great. Thanks for joining us. See you next and time. See you next time, for sure. So we're going to try um, two different, another way of cooking these pancakes, which is to use a cast iron pan in a very hot oven. So this oven is actually set at 500 degrees, so preheating for a while, so this cast iron pan is super, super hot. Um, a little bit different style than uh, doing it on the stovetop. So let me go ahead and get this thing going. I'm going to oil the pan, and then I'm just going to simply put the pancakes on it, close the door, and then we'll let them bake for a little bit. Let these go for a little bit and then we'll check on them and see how they do. Alright, so again, this oven is at 500 and not only is the oven, the bottom element on, but the, the broiler up element is on as well. And we've got this up on the highest rack, so we're getting browning from the top as well as from the bottom. So we never had to flip them, we did rotate them a little bit uh, part way through. And it's been uh, four minutes now, so it really hasn't even been that long. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Take a look. Ooh, even very brown. Maybe a little over brown on that one. But this one looks good. Okay. So this one got a little scorched probably while we were getting the camera set up. This one looks good, but I'm sure. That's running. Anyway, maybe you'll be able to hear this as I cut. You can hear that crunch. So these are definitely crisp. So another way of, of uh, cooking these, and of course it didn't really, uh, we put a teeny bit of oil on the pan, but nothing on the top. So if you're looking for a slightly lower oil content, and you're trying to save yourself using oil, but otherwise it's very hot. That's good, so it's still crisp. Chewy on the inside, a little drier than when we did it on the, on the stove top, um, which may be a function also of how long we left it in the oven. So I'm sure if we had pulled it another minute, particularly on this one earlier, it would be a little bit more moisture on the inside. Excellent. So two ways to cook these on the stove top or in the oven. Again, we had the broiler and the bake the underneath each one. Come on to my kitchen. Come on to my kitchen. Come on down to my kitchen. Come on down. Won't you come into my kitchen? Come into my kitchen. Come on down.